December 18th dawned pretty cold, six degrees, but hey, I was pumped. This was my, I don't know, 40, how many years have I been doing this? Time I've been compiling the Saxim Christmas bird count. Our first find were these flock of ravens, and we knew there had to be something up. There were so many of them, and sure enough, there was a, a roadkill deer or a wolfkill deer, not sure what, ton of tracks. But while we were waiting there, white winged crossbills flew in. And that was the only footage I got <laughs> right there. And once again, I'm with board members Dave and Lori and, and Harmony from Cloquet, originally from Cloquet, now at, studying at Harvard. It is na it's cold. It's about uh, seven degrees this morning with about a 10, 12 mile an hour wind, which hopefully will die down. So pretty good wind chill as well. Starting off strong, white wing crossbills, eagles, uh, red poles. Yeah, starting off strong. Although a tough day for Mickey Mouse, just passed out there in the snow, in the ditch. He must have had a, a rough night last night. key to any Christmas bird count and getting birds out of the woods on cold days is just pishing. At least 20. Psh, 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 psh. Look. Wow. Red-breasted nuthatch. And here's our little free library. And I see a book I am going to take home and I will bring back here when I'm done, Grouse of the North Shore, Gordon Gullion. He did his research kind of out where I live in Carlton County. It was cool, a random stop when five, six boreal chickadees. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. You never know what you're gonna get on the Sag Zim Christmas bird counts. Lots of rough-legged hawks around this winter. They've come down from the tundra and they are lingering because there's very little snow cover and they're finding voles right and left. There's a lot of voles this winter and they are about the size of a red-tailed hawk, but they don't eat big stuff. They eat voles. Also stumbled into some magpies. Their population has been increasing over the years. Good to see them. As usual, we ended up at 1 p.m. and met at the Wilbert Cafe in Cotton to swap stories and add up our totals. And while I roll this beautiful Pine Martin footage from that same day at the Admiral Road Feeders, I'm going to tell you what we found. We ended up with a very respectable second highest ever 37 species. 39 is our most we've ever recorded. 18 folks braved the 6 degree temperatures there on December 18th. We had some record numbers, 18 white-breasted nuthatches, ties the record, six golden crown kinglets, that's a new record high. They will stay around some winters. 110 bohemian waxwings, that's a new record, as well as four juncos. Some other significant numbers, 43 Canada Jays, that's our second highest total ever, most since 2001. 29 rough-legged hawks, most since 1999 and 20 bald eagles. That's the most since 2009. We also had a lot of our usual boreal species, three great gray owls, 184 common red poles, 17 white wing crossbills, 16 evening grosbeaks. Uh, yeah, Mary Lou's is not in the circle. <laughs> I'm happy with that. 
It is almost time for the 2024 Tiny Bird Art Silent Auction. Well, Silent, it's online. So yeah, we've got 120 pieces of original bird art, all kinds of mediums from very talented artists across the country. So yeah, we're it's a fundraiser, certainly. So bid generously. There's details on our website. I'm going to put the link right there. And it's an online auction. It runs January 25th through the 28th. That's a Thursday through a Sunday. So yeah, help us uh, raise funds for more land purchases and more educational programming. Tiny Bird Art 2024. The morning of the Birdathon, world's coldest Birdathon. This guy gets it. This guy totally gets it. Welcome to Birdathon 2024 in an El Nino year. <laughs> you can see no snow. A balmy 23 degrees Fahrenheit. The harbor is open here, so I might have a better chance for ducks. It's overcast, so I can scan for ducks all day long. And it's uh, pretty calm, so maybe I can pluck out some long-tailed ducks or even something more exciting. How about an ancient muralette? <laughs> but in my grubby little hands, I have the tally sheet. Every species has a different point value. So the rarer it is, the more points you get. So there's a fair amount of strategy, especially with the uh, folks doing the, the two day event. I'm doing the winter green, which means uh, under my own power. So I'm fat biking and walking today in Grand Marais, Minnesota and the shores of Lake Superior. And you're saying, Sparky, why aren't you in the Sag Zimbog? Well, the playing field is all of Northeast Minnesota and Northwest Wisconsin. So a lot of strategy comes into play. Do you chase a rarity? Do you just pile up on the uh, common birds? I think I'm gonna scan for ducks first. And gulls. Let's get to it. And a pair of common golden eyes. I think they're one point. <laughs> Some mallards and a possible black duck. I gotta check out. Yes, long-tailed ducks. Okay, good start. It's like, uh, I don't know, a dozen, 15 long-tailed ducks out there. You can often find them, not easily, you have to scan for them in the open waters of Lake Superior, uh, especially around Grand Marais and up to the Canadian border. So, pretty cool. I think that's three points. Towns in solitaire right in front of me. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm just sitting at a picnic table listening to a Towns in solitaire sing <laughs> in the Grand Ray campground. He's singing kind of softly. But yeah, I heard this weird chip note. I was pitching in chickadees. I'm like, that's, what is that chip note? And it wasn't a chickadee, it wasn't a boreal chickadee. And boom, out flies this little thrush. And it's, uh, yeah, Townsend Solitaire, bird native to the Rocky Mountains and Western US. But uh, he's dropping down on the ground and picking up fallen mountain ash berries. That was unexpected. Oh, here he goes. Let me try and get some video. I'd also heard there were some bluebirds in the harbor, and I found them, seven of them. Dang Canadians trying to get into Minnesota. As Garrison Keeler called them, frostbacks. Oh, I think I see one. I call the Coast Guard. It's wearing a toque. Must be a Canadian.
couple ducks way out there. Red-breasted merganser. It's got to be worth a couple points. It is. Not a super rarity on Lake Superior in winter. Good one. I'll take it. I'm out on Artist Point. I don't see any artists or Canadians. It could be lurking. Red-breasted nuthatch. Still no red-breasted nuthatch. Oh, after a hard couple hours of biking, <laughs> I thought I better get some lunch. And I headed over to my sister's place, had to get the mushroom and Swiss burger, um, but they had Thai chicken and rice soup. Man, couldn't pass that up either. So yeah, fortified, I continued up onto the hillside of Grand Marais and found some good birds. Not least of which was this massive flock of, I don't know, 130 to 200 Bohemian waxwings. I searched for a cedar in there, but could not find any cedars. But fun just listening to them. I would say a really good day. Yeah, superstar bird for me today. I'm gonna have to say those two, two, two Townsend solitaires. A bird that shows up in the Northwoods every winter, but two, and one was singing. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I think they've been here for a while. I think other people have seen them, but a lot of points. Second place might be those long-tailed ducks, although I see them almost every time I come up here. <laughs> I never get tired of it birds that nest up in the arctic tundra and winter on the great lakes often in the atlantic and boy that giant flock of bohemian waxwings that was pretty cool well and the bluebirds yeah we got to have a top four there seven bluebirds they're hardy hardy thrushes yeah it'd be fun to hear what the other teams found that's always a blast to hear the stories. On Saturday night, most of the teams gathered at Clyde Ironworks in Duluth for our compilation dinner, and great, we got to hear all the stories, all the adventures, all the great birds that people found during this 12th or 13th annual Birdathon. And it was a record setter. 12 participating teams found 81 combined species. I think our previous record was 73, so. We added things like Chipping Sparrow and Swamp Sparrow, Dick Sissel. There was, well, Cleveland, the Brown Thrasher. Yeah, get it? The mild winter so far really uh, helped <laughs> these totals, of course. Including we had Pine Warbler and Palm Warbler. Crazy. There were 18 species of waterfowl, including Ringneck Duck, Long-Tailed Duck, White-Winged Scoter, Pintail, Gadwall, Canvasback. Crazy. Crazy tundra swan. The two-day competition was super close. Last year, the, the Empire Shrikes back won. This year, the Grousing Twitchers gained the title back. They, both teams had around 60 species. 
but the grousing twitchers went over to Shawamagan Bay near Ashland, Wisconsin, and loaded up on a bunch of five-point waterfowl. So it's all about strategy. And how about those wintergreen teams? Some of the teams walked up to 11 miles. That is amazing. So, yeah, kudos to them. But we had some great birds. We had all the kind of the usual boreal birds. American three-toed and blackback woodpecker, several great gray owls, several hawk owls, boreal chickadee, spruce grouse, crossbills of both varieties. But a big, big shout out to John Ellis, who raised over $1,000 in pledges. Thanks, John. He comes through every year with the highest number of pledges. I'm going to head down the shore. We'll uh, see you on the next Virtually Live. You can see all the details and get all the results on our website at saxim.org. Think about it for next year. It's a great event. Lots of fun. 